Dennis Report is in-depth media for New Brunswick. We are supported by viewers just like you. If you'd like to support the show, go to thedennisreport.ca and click on PayPal or Patreon. Welcome to The Dennis Report, and thanks for tuning in. Doing things differently this time, as you can tell. Recently, my wife and I, Betsy Griswold, went dog sledding. Doug Stokely, down in Havelock, runs a small company called NB Urban Mushing. It is so much fun. So we're doing our best to put you in the sled with us and enjoy the ride. Special thanks to Doug. What a great time we had. And to the dogs. They were so much fun and so fast. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. So when we were on the trail, you were talking about the amount of food <laughs> yeah. that you fed. So can you walk us through how much food you do for the dog? It's uh, it's definitely not for the uh, for the faint of heart. Okay. Um, I go through probably six months. I'll go through a thousand pounds of ground beef and ground chicken. Uh, probably 70, 80 bags of kibble. <laughs> so. When I when I buy my food supply, I buy uh, a ton of ground beef and a ton of uh, ground chicken, and I buy it all at once. And I buy four or five hundred pounds of fish, and then I buy pork and and things like that, and and uh, and then my kibble supply. So I buy uh, about 140 bags of kibble at a time. You must have a big storage. Yeah, I actually converted. Uh, I I had uh, dog houses set up in my in my dog yard and like it's all fenced in. All my dogs come in, sleep in, in the house at nights and stuff like that. I have a dog room with, with banks of, uh, of kennels for them. So I have 20 dogs in total, but uh, two years ago I converted a, a 40 foot shipping container ah. and I got it spray foamed, insulated inside and put a little mini slit in there for like for a little bit of heat. And then I, I built dog houses inside of it and then cut dog, dog doors on the outside. So it goes out into an open pen the dogs just go in and out like through the day yeah that's great yeah because uh, for all the work you got to do with all the dogs at least that would save a little bit of <laughs> the work yeah well I, I looked into uh, like building a like a proper kennel and uh geez it was uh it was like 60 grand yeah and it wasn't what i wanted yeah. like you know and then i'd still have to put another you know 10 15 into it to, to get it to the way i wanted it but uh, no uh a 3800 dollars shipping container thousand dollars to insulate it last me forever um, when we were out on the trail you were talking about going out on a long one by yourself and, and feeling like it was a hundred years ago yeah like uh, the one of the main questions uh, I get like when people first question is uh, what does it cost to, to maintain like 20 dogs okay. you know vet bills 10 grand a year uh, for 20 dogs I'm probably spending anywhere from 30,000 to feed them and and then house them keep their their health and all that up good uh but yeah the the main reason uh the question that i get is why do you do this like why do you put yourself through you know all that <laughs> all that stress and the yeah. and the uh and the money uh i mean it's it's a passion i started this with uh, four dogs uh 10 years ago yeah. and uh just absolutely just fell in love with it and in the beginning uh it was a lot of training but after we got going when we were doing you know 20 30 kilometer runs uh there's just something about being out in the woods with just your dogs and uh, you know i got 10 of my best friends out there with me and so you don't hear anything except the dogs and the rails going along the from the sled on the snow and there's just something about it that it just reminds me that it's like i'm i'm transported back 100 years and i'm the only man on the on the face of the earth and and this is what we're doing for I mean it's just something primal about it that is is very you know yeah. passionate for me it's 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 hard to explain yeah do you um you ever get lost I've uh I've got lost a few times yeah. uh I've had a couple of scary experiences with the dog teams uh I live right on a river uh. and about uh, five or six years ago it was minus thir and the river's not deep like it's only yeah. you know, a couple feet it's still you yeah 
So uh, yeah, we're about uh, 15 miles out and we're coming and it's only a short little part where I have to cross the cross the river and it was, it was overflow when we came across it. So when we went back, it was probably eight, nine, 10 hours later and we, we actually fell through the ice. It was minus 35. We're 15 miles from home. I'm standing in water this deep as I'm lifting my dogs up and putting them up on the, and it was, if you've ever been really cold like that, you just lose all function. I, I couldn't even think straight. And the only thing I could think to do was I, I, you know, I have towels and stuff like that and dog jackets is I put the jackets on the dogs. I dried them off the best I could and just headed, headed for home, you know, as yeah, fast home. as we could get there. You know, I tried starting a fire that wasn't, that wasn't going because everything was soaked. Yeah. And, uh, and then another time right on this trail here, uh, I was planning on a trip from here to Sussex, about a uh, hundred kilometer round trip. Hmm. And, uh, so I had 12 dogs and we took off from here, like going like crazy. And, uh, dogs were all, all pumped up and my ski pole started to come out of my bag. So I bent over to pick up the ski poles when I did, I pivot my foot, front end of the sled hit the edge. I dumped the sled and the first rule of dog sledding is you don't let go because the dogs won't stop. Uh, the way I train my dogs is if they feel a lot of pressure on their harness, like if we're going up hills, for instance, you've seen it on like how I stop the dogs at the bottom of the hill yeah. and get them amped up and then we pull hard up the hills. So I train my dogs that way to when they feel the tension, tension to dig in, pull harder. Yeah. So I kind of regret. So the, I, I dumped here, like right where those bikes are basically. Yeah. And when I hit the deck, both my boots flew off my feet and they drug me for about a kilometer and a half up the trail on my side. And I tore my bicep off, off my arm. So I was in so much pain, I just had to let go. So I had my phone and my GPS and everything in my sled bag. And the dogs kept running, they ran for uh, 15 miles. And when I got up to them, so I had to walk back a kilometer in my sock feet, put my boots on, jump my truck, go get my snowmobile, come back and, and chase the team down. And when I got there, the dogs had, uh, they were all sitting in the middle of the trail. It was a beautiful sunny afternoon. They were all snoozing. They ran back to my sled bag, ripped open a $400 sled bag, ripped the, so I had a bunch of meat and all that stuff for our trip. They ate all the fish, all the beef, and they were all just curled up, just snoozing in the trail. So from their point of view, it was kind of <laughs> It was a great, day. yeah, and it was easy for them because they didn't have to haul my big uh, butt around. around. <laughs> oh my. But the degree of risk, eh? Because it's it, recreational, but just, just under the surface, there's a degree of risk. Absolutely. Always. And, and the worst part, like the reason you never let go is because, uh, you know, although my dogs all live together and they're all friendly and stuff like that, just from the excitement and the adrenaline that's rushing in these guys, uh, well, there's been big dog teams up in uh, the Yukon that people have lost and they've run 170 miles. And by the time they catch up with their dogs, yeah. some of them have, yeah. have, have passed they're because, exhausted. yeah. 170 mile run like that's yeah, that, crazy. that's crazy and what goes through my mind is getting a, in a tangle yep. and then they one dog falls down and and yelping yeah. and then it's just a pack attack and so that's that's the biggest danger of yeah. stuff like that but i mean i have since that happened i've bought uh writable snow hooks okay so if the sled falls off the snow hook falls on the ground and it'll bounce and it'll eventually right itself and then hook and stop the team and it works like a charm because okay. there's been about four or five times when <laughs> that's happened and and the, and the snow hook has, has saved me a long walk technology makes its way to dog sledding it does so <laughs> yeah um highlights do you have a like a favorite thing with a customer or on your own or something that just kind of just stay with you forever i always enjoy taking uh the kids out the most just because just for their pure enjoyment like the, nothing is staged nothing is planned with the kids they're just like dogs like they you know they, they wear their emotion on their sleeve and every kid just just absolutely loves it and you know when we when we take off from here just here and there you know everyone's screaming and just having a blast and and uh, generally what I get is uh I just had a gentleman out with his two kids and he said uh, I'm just going to get off and we'll get some video of you guys going by and I said sure so I said to the kids, I said, we're going to be a lot faster with your father not on, on here. So as we're going by, the young fella 
hey dad you might as well just walk back to the truck this is too much fun we're going too fast <laughs> So, but, uh, and then just recently we took out, uh, it's kind of like a make, a make a Wish Foundation, but it's for senior citizens. And it's called We Are Young in uh, Halifax. And they grant wishes for senior citizens over 70. And an uh, 81 year old woman wanted to go dog sledding, so they, they contacted us and uh, we took her out uh, about two weeks ago. Yeah, and she had an absolute blast. A lot Did, of fun. Didn't get lost, eh? No, no, I, we pretty much <laughs> stick to these trails and. Uh, and uh, wow. yeah, stick to where we where we know. So some of it's about dog sliding, but some of it's about making a memory too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, like I say this has been a passion. Well, obviously, <laughs> you know, it, it's you don't get into this business to to make money because you'll, you'll never do it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's just a passion for the dogs that I have, and and I, I want to share that with everybody. And I mean, yeah. it's you know more people that come out and experience it, and. For this part of New Brunswick, yeah. I'm almost 100% sure I'm the only person that's that's doing it. I know there's another place up in northern New Brunswick, but it's it's like four times the, four well, times which the price. Which then leads to uh, people finding you. So let's say we get this thing done, we get it edited, get it up, and suddenly you get 100 phone calls saying, yeah. Hey, Stokely, I want to go sledding, man. So for how much could you handle? Like, would this be, I know it's a passion. But at the same time, if it, if you had more business, would that be a good thing, or is it? Is I'm it turning people away as it is. Okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I I could do another four tours today alone. Yeah. But I mean, it's. The work. The the dogs. I'm sure we could go out for another one. Yeah. But I don't want to. I don't want to do this to the point where the dogs yeah. aren't getting excited for it and don't enjoy it. And if it if it just becomes a job for them and for me, yeah. What's the point? Yeah. So there's a cap then, because. That's a little bit what we were talking about. New Brunswick is a window of opportunity with a type of tourism that doesn't get into like mass market tourism. So, you know, I can handle 100 people or 200 people over a season. Mm -hmm. I could handle so many people going through Funding National Park, so you still keep it not all downtrodden, but it still feels like you're the only one out there. Yeah. So your, your work kind of ties to that very much, is that or I can handle this many. So, and that's a good thing in a way. Yeah. If you only had so many people coming, it kind of um, doesn't sort of improves the value of the experience, but but it keeps it sacred in a way. It, yeah. It keeps it. This is what we do. This is what it's like. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't get all commercialized with, uh, you know, oh, you want to bring a 50 people. Oh, yeah, that's more money in my pocket. No, I don't. I don't want any part of that yeah. side of it. Authentic uh, experience. That's what I'm after. So authentic. This is what dog sledding is like. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, you've seen, I don't know if you guys got footage of, of the hookup, but I mean, uh, another question I get asked a lot is, how do you make them run? <laughs> and the first thing I tell them is, well, you'll understand that once we start hooking up. And the other thing is, uh, I tell people is, you can't push a rope. So meaning, <laughs> if the dogs aren't, don't want to go, well, you've seen what I did with Tap. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, Tap, one of my dogs put the brakes on. Yeah. So I instantly take him off because yeah. if he's not having fun i don't want to force yeah. him to do something he doesn't want to do yeah. but then as soon as he's loose you see what he's like he's yeah. Ah! This is fun now. Yeah, yeah yeah so i mean he had a bit of slack on his line yep he's he's the t kind of dog that he's smart enough that he he'll run fast enough that he's not being pulled by the neckline by his his running mates yeah, he's not working. but not fast enough that he's actually pulling yeah. so both of his lines are, are loose <laughs> But if I put him in a chase sled, like if you want to come out and, and follow us, like yeah. on another sled, I put him with his father, Jet, because yeah. Jet's a little bit slower, so he can't, he can't keep up with him. But uh, Tab will just work like a maniac just to keep up to where I'm going. So, yeah. A any final thoughts? This has been great. Um, any final thoughts for people watching this? about? No, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I want everyone to, to experience, but at the same time, uh, you know, I'm limited as to how much sure. I can do in a in a day, in a week, and and all that stuff. And obviously, it's uh, actually you, you're one of the lucky ones yep. because I've been putting people off <laughs> from year to year because you know bad trail conditions or or something like this. Like if we get uh, rain yep. and then a, a nice you know a, a freeze up, yeah. you guys seen how fast it was today? Just imagine when it's just solid ice. Yeah, it, it's just too dangerous for me to take dogs out. Yep. And I like to do. I mean, I could take, we could have went out today with uh, six dogs and it probably would have been fine. Yep. But I want to give people that experience of, 
you know, two or three dogs, you know, me and another person, two or three dogs would be plenty. Yeah. But I want to give that experience of seeing a full string of Eight? dogs yeah. of, uh, out in front of you. We had 10 today. Oh, that was 10 today? Yeah. Oh, I got to yeah. practice my counting. Yeah. I just, it's, it's long. Like, oh, we got all the horses out today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's kind of cool when we're doing winding uh, trails and stuff like that. Sometimes we'll have 14 dogs. So when we're on a trail, the dogs are around a turn. I don't even see my leaders, like, for half the trail until we get out onto a nice long stretch. And, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's pretty cool. That's great. Yeah, it's fun. That's how you love it. Oh, I do. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be in a bad spot if I didn't because <laughs> that's, uh, that's a big chunk of change that I'm, yeah. uh, I'm forking out. And your time. Thanks for this. No problem. Uh, Thank you. Day. Awesome. Good. I'll turn it off. That, that's going to be awesome when I get home and play with that. Instead of a Hollywood version. 